Kia ora, I'm Bernadette Valentine and today I'm going to run you through a quick tutorial on how to draw a beautiful tui bird sucking nectar from a harakeke flower. Get your pencils and paper ready and let's get cracking. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the image that we're going to draw. So have a look over here in our tui and let's see if we can find some shapes in here. One of the first shapes I always see is the round or oval shape of the Tui's head. Then she's got a huge tummy coming around the back, which we'll draw as another big oval. We can draw our branch of our harakeke flower coming down. And then what we'll do is our long harakeke flowers coming up after that. What I'm doing is I'm drawing with a really light pencil. So I want you guys to practice pressing really lightly with your pencil for this first part of the sketch. It will make it easier when we come to rubbing out parts of it later. So first of all, to make sure I get everything the right size, I'm going to start with the Tui's head. Now make sure that you don't draw it really little, because otherwise we're not going to have enough room for all the other details. And especially, I heard that you guys are going to be painting these later, so you need to make them nice and big. So let's start pressing as lightly as you can with an oval for the Harakeke, uh, for, sorry, the Tui's head. Then we're going to do another big oval for the Chewie's body coming in behind. You guys can pause this at any stage, I'm just going to keep on going. Then her beak, if you look at the angle, I'm going to use my pencil to get my angle right. I'm going to put my, her, my pencil right on the angle of the beak. And without moving the angle, I'm going to move my pencil back to my paper. Now I know that my beak has to go in that direction. So remembering that, a nice toey beak is going to come out of there. Now we don't know, we don't see the end of her beak, so I'm not going to draw the end for now. We're going to work that out later once we start getting into the harakeke flowers. Before I forget though, I'm going to do the end of her mouth here. She's got like the side of her mouth and it comes onto her head a little bit. So I'm going to do almost like her lips. Like that. Okay, just so we don't forget where it is. Then, before we move on, I'm just going to lightly put in the Tui's eye. So draw one outside shape of her eye, and then when you're ready, do the inside shape of her eye. And it's starting to come together. Okay, I'm not going to do her feet or her tail yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sketch in where I want my Harakeke um, branch to come down. So I'm actually going to bring that right down here through the whole picture, okay? Now I'm going to start thinking about adding some flowers. So with the Harakeke flowers, they come up on a stem and they come out with nice long petals. So I'm going to start a stem down the bottom here. I'm not going to draw as many as there are on this picture, okay? We're just going to draw a few just to get an idea. So let's draw the one that the Tui's drinking out of first. So we're going to bring the stem up. Now my stem is quite thick. My Harakeke flower stems are quite thick. So you need to do one line and then another line. Remember, try to press lightly because some of these lines we're going to rub out later. I'm pressing a bit harder just so you guys can see you guys can press as lightly as you can possibly. Now watch this, I'm going to make my flower come up to her beak. Okay, so first of all it comes out, then we go up, then the tip of the petal is a point, so I'm going to go from the point and come slightly out and then back down. Okay, I'm not going to go right to the end, see, I stopped there. So try to do that, pause the video, try to do that. Then on the other side, go out. Then we're going to go right up and I'm going to go quite close to her beak this time. Okay, I'm going to leave it as a point. But this time, this petal is going to come quite close to this petal and almost overlap. So I'm going to go down. And then it's going to join up with there and that's going to give me some good details for later. Then, if you have a look at the Harakeke flower on her, in this one, there's another petal that's hiding in the middle. 
So I'm going to draw that petal in now and it's going to cover up the end of my toy bird's beak. Then we can draw a skinny little line like that with a little dot on the end and another little line like that with a dot on the end and there's the stamen for the harikiki flower. Okay, let's try another one. We'll do a stem coming off that stem. And then what do we do? We come out and up and then around. We come out. Sometimes when you're close to other flowers, you're going to have to stop because you're going to go behind the other flower. So we go out and then I sort of lift my pencil but trace where it's going to go so that when I get to the bit that it comes out at, it's all ready. Then we'll do that middle petal that's hiding behind and then we'll do some stamen poking out. All ready for these to come together. Okay, we're getting there. Now, the trick to making it look natural is to have flowers and leaves and things that aren't the same size. So I've done a couple of flowers here that are the same size. So this time I'm actually going to make a small flower just to make it look a little bit more natural. So coming down here, I've got some flowers here that haven't quite opened. They're almost little buds. So we'll do the stem. Then I'm actually going to come right to the top and I'm going to just make one shape like that. Now I'm going to draw a line because there's still different petals in there, but they just haven't separated yet. Okay. You can do, this is up to you guys now, this is where you can make your artwork your own. So now you can carry on and you can add more stems coming out the side. More flowers. One petal. Two petal. Three petal. A few stamens sticking out. Okay, you might decide that you're going to have a stem that comes up this way. Up and around behind that guy. And then this flower is going to go that way, off the page. You might have another larger stem coming up and you might have a big flower hiding behind these flowers. Alright, I'm going to do a stem coming off the branch up here. And I'm going to go one. Two, three petals, stamen, stamen, stamen. Okay, it's entirely up to you guys now, making this your own, about how many flowers and how many um, extra details you can fit in. Remembering, of course, that when it comes to colouring in, the more flowers you've got, the harder work you've got. So if you want it quite simple, don't get too very away. Now, that's our flowers done. They're pretty much ready. We might put in a bit of a crinkly leaf here, just because they're not all flowers. Um, now we need to have a look at our tui. So our tui is all ready to be sitting on our branch. So her legs come down to her knee, and then they come up and they sort of fold over. So what we're going to do is we're going to go bring a leg in, not all the way to the branch yet because we're going to bend her knee there and then what happens with a tui bird or any bird's foot actually, they've got this base of their foot here and then they've got one claw that will go behind the branch to hold on but then she'll have three claws holding onto the branch this side and then on the end of each one you can put a pointy fingernail or claw. Now if you look at my one, the other leg on this picture is actually hiding behind the flower. So you guys can decide, oh well, actually I was almost going to put her there but guess what, our tui has got a beautiful white feathery tuft so we're going to have to put her in because otherwise she's not going to look like a tui. So put your white feathery tuft in first, and then I might make this, my other leg, just come down into here. You're not going to see much, but we'll just hide it behind those flowers, a leg and a couple of feet like that. Okay, and our last thing 
Just to add our last bit of detail to our tui is we're going to put a feathery tail coming out like that. Okay, and that will end up just being mostly dark because we don't see much detail in that. Okay, so now we've got our basic sketch and our shapes. So this is where you need to make the choice whether you want to be doing a painting or whether you want to make it into a detailed sketch. With your rubber, I've got a funny kneadable rubber, but you guys can use any rubber you want, or eraser. Um, we can rub out this edge of these shapes a little bit because they're not as perfect as that. And we can start looking at the beak. And her beak comes around like this, and then she's got her lippy bit that we put in before. So it's just a matter of working in just creating those solid lines. And this is also where we start doing a few little flicks and pieces to make it look like she's feathery instead of a solid circle. With the eye, I'm getting a darker pencil now so you guys might be able to get a sketching pencil or something. Or if you are going to paint it, you could do this bit with um, a small tipped vivid to make it stand out nicely. I'm going to colour in most of the eye dark but I'm going to leave some sections light to make it look like the sun reflecting into her eyeball. So when you're colouring in the eye do leave those little bits of white. If you do accidentally do colour them in um, you can always get a little bit of a trick for you teachers too is some twink and go over with just a dot or two in the eye to make it look like a little reflection and it just brings the eye to life. So now we can start looking at the different lines and the directions where her feathers are going. So she's got some lovely yellowy feathers because they're all covered in nectar on her nose. So when you're drawing the feather lines, think about the direction that they're going. Feathers on a tui's head, head towards the back of her neck. So when you're doing the lines for the feathers, don't just go like that sideways. To make them look feathery, get those lines going like that. And then they sort of come around her eye as well. Now if you are going to colour these in, I wouldn't go too hard into the details with your pencil because they'll just get covered up with whatever you use the colour. But what you could do is you could do a bit of colour in watercolour and then you can actually go back in with your pencil to add detail or with your um, fine tipped sharpie. Okay, around the back here we've got some bits and feathers that have sort of been a bit ruffled on her back. So I'm just going to bring those in now. And then the tail, we don't actually see much of the detail on the tail, so you could just shade that in. But do notice how I'm shading it in, but still going in the direction that the, lead, uh, the tail feathers would be going. And I'm going to miss those beautiful stamens because they're going to pop out now that I've coloured in the tail dark because they're going to stand out against the black background. Okay, now the things that make tuis stand out as tuis are those beautiful white feathers around their back and their chest. So these are our chest feathers here, I'm going to do these white ones. So they're like a little backwards C. Now I'm drawing them like this because if I start colouring in my tui back now, I'm going to lose those feathers. So I'm going to draw them like this so they really stand out. And just like I was doing with the other feathers, some of them go in different directions. So they tend to go around the shoulders of the tui. These ones come around this way. And these ones come around this way. OK, 
okay so just to have a little quick look you do one side of the feather and then the other side and they do overlap in real life but as long as we've got these nice white curly feathers standing up your tui will look wonderful now another little trick for teachers that i saw on something the other day was if your students do the painting and the coloring of your tui what you can do afterwards if you've got twink um, you can actually just go over and do the pet uh, do these feathers with twink or white or silver pen and it actually looks really effective as well so if you've got access to some some twink or poster pens um, anything that will go over the darker coloring that's a really cool way of getting white things to pop out so you can do that with these feathers and the chest feathers so there we have it now all we need to do is we have to go around and we have to think about what part of our toy is in shadow her legs are quite dark under here so I'm going to shade those in See how I'm moving my pencil around in circular movements like that? Just allows me to colour in but not have lines going through my tui because she's not a straight object. She is quite a rounded little thing. And I just want you to go, it's not just colouring in. I'm putting a darker layer of pencil around the outside of her claw and then using my circular movements just to create a bit of mass okay so don't color it all in now this is a little trick as well if you've got a rubber you can um, use a corner of your rubber or an edge if you've gone too far and you've just colored it all in and it's not showing any shape what you can do is you can get your rubber and you can actually pull some of the pencil off and it just makes your drawing have a bit more depth. So you can do that with your guys rubber as well, it doesn't have to be a fancy one like this. I'm going to go in and do that other leg before I forget that it's there. It does get a bit tricky when you're doing things behind the flowers. But as long as you don't lose track of where you are. Okay, I'm going to um, shade in one of the flowers for you. Oh, hang on. Just put a few extra feathers. These aren't the white feathers. These are just the colourful feathers of the tui. So if you guys, when you get to colouring, have a look at where I've got the most of the colour. I've got heaps of blue around this edge and on the top and a bit of a blue and a green on the back. But then a lot of the other rest of the tui is actually quite dark. So you need to make, I wouldn't go in with black, I'd go in with a dark, dark blue to do the dark areas of the tui because black can really flatten things and it can get a bit out of hand. But if you use a nice dark, dark blue instead, um, you'll be able to get a much nicer finish. So you can just keep on going through with your shading. Any bits that you think need to be really dark, press quite hard with your pencil. Just be really careful around the details of your flowers because we don't want to lose those beautiful stamen because once you colour they're going to be nice bright yellow and they're going to stand out really lovely. So what you could do, if you've done a bit of shading with pencil, it still will work if you use a bit of watercolour paint to add a bit of colour. Um, just be aware that some in the darker areas, like if I've put watercolour paint over here, it might blend and make a bit of a mottled colour, but it will still work and it could just look nice and natural, so it's definitely something that you could try. Um, now I'm going to show you how to shade in a flower. So having a look at the flower they sort of start a bit darker and then as you head up they get nice and bright so what you can do is you start your stem to the outside bit first and then 
using those round movements. I'm pressing lighter with my pencil now just to create a bit of a 3D effect. So the, the, out, the outer lines are dark but the inside's a bit lighter. Then we're going to come up, pressing quite hard because we're going to do the outside bits a bit dark. Make sure those are nice and then firm. And then as we come in, I press lighter and lighter and lighter. Lighter, so I'm hardly even touching the paper now, just to make a nice light, light shading. Alright, and then we can blend out this hard line with a bit of shading as well, so it's not just a hard line. So you can press a little bit harder along that line and then get lighter and lighter and lighter again, so it blends out. This inside bit here, I'm going to press quite dark because it will be, it's inside all the rest of the petals, it's going to be quite dark. So we can start to build up a bit of detail. Now, once you've got shaded in this other side, starting nice and light. See, I'm using those circular movements again. And then getting a bit darker around the edges. Go. We can look at your middle petal and we're going to press quite dark with her, the middle one, because it's inside the others so it'll be a little bit shadier and a little bit more shadowed. But same process, do the outside bits first and then shade into the middle and then we start to get a flower emerging. We can make our stamens stand out a bit more but I would try not to colour them in too much because and bright yellow so they should stand out nicely and then we can just continue going around pressing harder on the outlines that you need to stand out now what you can do is on these parts that you've shaded in if we shade in nice and lightly around the outside of the toy's head to make it look a bit 3d See how I'm shading with the toy? I'm not actually doing circles this time, I'm shading it in the direction of the feathers. So that's another little trick. If you've got feathers or a texture that you want to show up, make sure you're shading in that direction as well and it will just make it look a bit more natural. So what I'm going to show you is a little trick. So you've got a medium uh, toned now on your shading. So what you can do now to add a few more feathers Look at that, just pressing harder over your shading already to make more feathers stand out. You can also, if you've got a rubber that you could possibly, um, like one of the normal hard rubbers, not like my one, but a normal hard rubber, you can actually rub out bits as well from the shape of feathers and that will create an even um, more even more of a differing tone for your feathers. So here we go, we have it. I'm going to carry on with this. I've just got to go and double check on my kids because they're home today. I need to make sure they've had their lunch. So I'll get this finished when I can. But I would love to see your drawings and how they've gone. <laughs> 